have fought a very firmly against white domination. I have fought very firmly against black domination. I cherish the ideal of a new South Africa where all South Africans are equal. Have you ever thought about someone whereby when it comes to political inspiration, courage, vision, and resilience in the growing and harrowing reality that many Africans experience at this time in South Africa? The name Mandela works and is a song many sing to eulogize the definite struggle of the individual who bears that name. It was a festive and emotional end to Nelson Mandela's four-day state visit to Britain. Alright, so let's dig in. Nelson Mandela's life is a remarkable story of resilience, courage, and unwavering commitment to justice in a grandiose reality of an apartheid government. I stand here before you not as a prophet, but as a humble servant of you, the people. His mom. Non Kafi Fani no Sekeni. I hope I pronounced that right. Alright, give birth to a child who eventually gave a mind blowing meaning to the name Mandela. He grew up in a society deeply divided by racial segregation and the system enforced strict racial discrimination, limiting the rights and opportunities of the black population. So, actually, Nelson was not his original name. He couldn't carry on his indigenous name, Rulilala Mandela. However, at his primary school in Kumu, his teacher, Miss Ndingin, gave him the name Nelson at the age of seven. Can you like, share, and subscribe to the channel? In his early 20s, Nelson Mandela moved to Johannesburg, where he first encountered the racial discrimination that would later become entrenched in law by the apartheid government. This encounter pushed him to join the ENC, which stands for African National Congress. He co-founded the Youth League the following year, 1944. So as a young man working on the mines, then later as a clerk in a law firm, Nelson Mandela pursued his law studies and joined the African National Congress, which is the oldest black political organization in South Africa. And in that same year, 1944, he married Evelyn Mays, and they had two sons and two daughters, one of whom sadly died in a car accident. Unfortunately, they had a divorce. In 1958, but as a good looking man, he remarried that same year to win Madikizela Mandela, but later they divorced in 1996. Meanwhile, in 1953, Nelson Mandela co founded and ran the only black law firm which defended black people affected by the apartheid, which was later consumed by the political influence of the white government as at that time. After he was arrested in 1956 for treason where he served five years in prison, I believe the rage for fight for what is right resulted to his action after he was released. He, along with his ANC members and the South Africa Community Party, co-founded the militant group named Umkonto Wesiswe, which means the spear of the nation. In 1964, he was sentenced to life imprisonment for plotting to overthrow South Africa's apartheid regime. And for the next 27 years of his life, Mandela experienced lots of gravy harsh conditions on Ruben Island, a notorious prison, while being transported to three different prisons practically because of his rising influence on his fellow inmates. He was denied access to see his family and vice versa. He faced numerous abuses from the white guards. Sadly, his sight also got damaged due to having walked at the lime quarry without glasses. Despite the isolation and adversity, he remained steadfast in his belief and became a symbol of hope for the oppressed. In fact, he earned a bachelor's degree while in prison. Nelson Mandela's imprisonment governed international support for the anti-apartheid movement and increased pressure on the South African government to end racial segregation. Of all these struggles, some interesting aspect of Mandela's personal life is that he was a big fan of sports. He trained as an amateur heavyweight boxer and a long distance runner. He really loved boxing though. <laughs> and on the 11th of January 1962, using the adopted name David 
Mutsamai, he left South Africa secretly and traveled around Africa and he even visited England to gain support for the armed struggle. He also received military training in Morocco and Ethiopia, learning how to use automatic rifles, pistols, mortars, bombs and mines. He believed that the use of violence was justified in the battle to bring down apartheid. He also traveled to Algeria that same year to receive some training. As shocking as it may sound, Mandela never fired a shot in anger during the armed struggle in South Africa. He was arrested in a police roadblock outside Hawick on the 5th of August in 1962 and charged with leaving the country illegally and inciting workers to strike. He was convicted and sentenced to five years imprisonment, which he began serving in Pretoria local prison. In October 1963, he joined 10 others on trial for sabotage in what became known as the Rivonia Trial. Facing the death penalty, his words to the court at the end of his famous speech on the 20th of April 1964 became immortalized. He said, I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. Wow, 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 such an amazing, strong and inspiring man he was. Unfortunately, his mother died in 1968 and his eldest son, Fembi, died in 1969 and he was not allowed to attend any of their funerals. In 1990, after years of activism and international pressure, Mandela was finally released from prison. His release marked a positive turning point in and to South African history and it set the stage for a peaceful transition to democracy. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. Mandela wasted no time in working towards reconciliation and healing the wounds of apartheid. He eventually became the first black president in the year 1994 after South Africa's first democratic election. His presidency was marked by commitment to unity forgiveness and equality of all people. Funny enough, Mandela remained on the US terrorist watch list until the year 2008. The US government placed the African National Congress on this list in the 1980s when the organization was firmly committed to armed resistance against apartheid. So in the year 2008, after Mandela won the Nobel Peace Prize, the US removed ANC members from its terrorist list. After leaving office in the year 1999, Mandela continued to work tirelessly for humanitarian causes such as combating HIV AIDS, promoting education, and so on. His legacy lives on through the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Nelson Mandela received over 695 awards, wow, including the 1999 Nobel Peace Prize. More than 25 schools, universities, and educational institutions have been named after Nelson Mandela. At least 19 scholarships and foundations bear his name. He was awarded 115 honorary degrees and more than 95 sculptures, statues, or pieces of art and dedication to him. Nelson Mandela's statue is the only black man in the Parliament Square and it was unveiled on the 29th of August in the year 2007. The 9 feet bronze statue is the first statue of a black person to be housed in the Parliament Square. It was created by the English sculptor Ian Waters at the whooping cost of 400,000 euros. Nelson Mandela eventually got married to Grasa Machel 
who was the widow of the former president of Mozambique and she was his wife until he passed on in the year 2013. So therefore the name Nelson Mandela is definitely more than a great song that sings in, especially to the inhabitants of his little village, Kunu, the whole South Africa and even Africa at large. His unwavering fight for justice and equality, being a remarkable leader, his display of immense bravery in the face of adversity, his compassion, forgiveness, his competency, respect, courage, and vision. Such an amazing man he was. Omo, I really truly salute for you, sir. His legacy serves as a beacon of hope and definitely a source of inspiration to many. Rest on the great Madiba, evergreen he is. All right, so that's the story of the great icon Nelson Mandela. But how about I tell you the story of the woman king, the woman who made sure things were done as it ought to be in all industries and organizations, the woman who made sure a whole nation was safe and secure while she was on the throne. So sit back and anticipate the woman king.